Um, so the last couple of things have talked about a journey and the importance of a journey, whether that's internally or whether that's with your customers and your prospects. Um, and I'd like to, to bring um, Paul up on stage because Paul talks about what he's doing as a mammoth journey. Uh, Paul Higgins is the uh, um, head of marketing for Talk Talk Business. And uh, he spent the last three years there uh, with, with the aim and the ambition to bring the whole company on a journey. And in fact, marketing within that company on a journey to make sure that it's got the right stakeholder engagement at the right levels across that business. Uh, and I think there's going to be some real learnings that we can all take from that journey that, uh, that Paul has been uh, taking. So without further ado, Paul. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, thanks very much, Richard. So uh, as Richard said, I'm kind of going to talk for about 20 minutes around some practical stuff that, that I've kind of been involved with over the last three years, moving the team uh, within the business forward. So just a, a little bit about me. Uh, I started my career at the Manchester Evening News uh, way back in the day where I don't think people really knew what digital actually meant. Uh, we were even couriering uh, plates to the printer uh, for the magazine and I was lucky enough to be involved in uh, the in inception of Manchester Online. Uh, mainly, I think, because I was one of only a dozen people that were under 21 in the uh, organisation. I spent four years in Australia uh, working for a, a small finance company there, doing a lot of uh, setting the marketing function up, dealing with people from Hutchison to Fox Sports, uh, OneTel. Came back to the UK, had two years of character building uh, in the Cordwell Group, um, where uh, I was uh, made a man, uh, so I was told. Um, and then latterly, uh, the last seven years with Carphone and then the last three, four years at TalkTalk. Talk. So what I'm going to kind of talk about is this idea of, of, of kind of change agents. And just to give you a, a sense of who TalkTalk Talk Business are, um, we are, a, I was listening earlier on intently to the question around being a, a public company. We are a public company. We do look at things every quarter. This is the second half of our year. Therefore, we do have a travel ban and I'm not really meant to be here. So uh, if, uh, if anybody does say so, I'm, I'm not here. The good news about that, about me not really being here, is I don't have a big corporate presentation to go through for you. So TalkTalk Talk Business, we're a multi-channel, multi-product organisation. You know, we sell broadband to Soho small businesses. We sell uh, big networking solutions to large corporates and enterprises. We sell through small dealers and we sell through large system integrators. So it's a big matrix, complicated beast of selling different things to different people. And when Richard and Hanny asked me to talk about this idea of transforming teams and images, I kind of said, well, it, it, it's actually less about kind of this idea of transformation and, and having this idea of kind of changing the, 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 the organization that I was working in and changing the business and, and, and meeting the needs of, of the organization as we had it. And I'd love to tell you that three years ago, I said, you know what, this is all about me transforming the team and transforming our image, this is what we're gonna do, it was actually meeting the needs of, of, of both internal and external factors. And externally, a number of people have said it, we know that the, the world's changing, 70% of the purchasing decisions made online before they talk to a brand. People are interacting with however many 15 bits of content before they kind of make a, a conversation. So those things we, we had to take into account, you know, so we, there was a case for change. And I think that's the big thing, you know, you've got to find the case for change, you know, and then kind of ride along with it. So if those were the external factors that made me think, you know, we need to do something about this. We need to think about the team, think about how we're portrayed within the organisation to really get ourselves in the middle of the organisation to kind of drive it out. I then think about the internal factors. And those, that isn't our boardroom and our esteemed, uh, my, my esteemed colleagues. If it was, I'd probably be this Auburn, no, that's right, it is Auburn, uh, chap at the edge looking rather uncomfortable in his suit. Um, but, you know, we have a, a board of directors that are made up of salespeople and accountants. And marketing was never really front and centre. We, we, if we wanted revenue, we went out and bought revenue. If we wanted profit, we stopped people travelling. So some things haven't changed. Um, but we were never really an organisation that said, right, let's kind of, how much can we grow? Where can we get that growth from? So as I looked and, and said, well, our business strategy was changing. We wanted to move from being a point product sales kind of team to a, 
a solutions kind of sales engine uh, move from being having a very transactional relationship to having a, a more of a trusted supplier partner relationship with our customers. I wouldn't go as far as to say uh, we were going to get emotionally involved with them, uh, but the idea was that we definitely, uh, they, they feared us less, they wanted to work with us more, they wanted to engage with us more and more, you know, it was actually changing the perception of, of ourselves in the eyes of our customers. And to do this, I had to change what we did as a team. I had to change what we, our activity, and therefore how we were kind of perceived around the boardroom table. You know, we, we had to drop the, uh, the marketing love bomb somehow to a, a set of salespeople that didn't want it and a set of accountants that feared how much it was going to cost. So those things kind of together meant I did need to transform things. You know, you did need to start that transformation of, of a, uh, a functional piece of, a functional team doing lots of functional things, supporting salespeople uh, and doing all those things that market, B2B marketing teams uh, have always had to do and transform us to, to be something that, you know, we were the first point of contact for, for ideas, we were the first point of contact for change. How could we really drive significant change into the business? And over the last three, three and a half years, we, we've, we've gone into that and I've started to coin it as, as what I've called the, my own four C's of marketing. Um, and they are around kind of, it's about commercialism, it's about creativity, it's about consistency, we talked about earlier on, and it's absolutely about the customer. And with those four things, we've managed to shift perceptions, we've managed to shift activity, We've managed to shift how we do things and, 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 and what we do. And the world of digital has just helped us do that. And, and it's helped us bring that change kind of uh, forward. And so I'm going to go through those four things and, and then talk a little bit about kind of some of the results we, we've, we've got. So the, uh, the commercialism. So if you've got a, a board of directors that are salespeople and, a, and a accountants, the thing you need to know, you need to know your numbers. Because if you don't know your numbers, you die a painful, slow and horrible death around that boardroom table. Uh, and you need results. I'll let you into a little secret. Our board meeting, and I'm sure you can all uh, associate with this, our board meeting, we go through the, uh, the sales review. Sales, yep, yep, yep. Well, well, things are in the pipeline. We've not closed it in. Yeah, it's coming, it's coming. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, a few problems. All the snow, all the sun, oh, the rain. Oh, nobody's going to... Everybody nods, Sage. The ops guy kind of stands up. PCA is this, first time resolution this. Oh, we need more people there, wall sickness, blah, blah, blah. God love the IT kind of CIO gets up. Infrastructure, cost, cloud, cloud. Everybody, everybody nods sagely. Then I stand up and suddenly the room comes to life. What's happening here? Are there numbers? And I would guarantee it's probably the most expensive PPC review <laughs> in the month. Well, where are we for business broadband? Where are we for... Lads, it, it changes. Let's just... But it, it, when we kind of think about those perceptions, what digital has done and being able to integrate those channels and show clear line of sight between what we spend and what we get back, the boardroom talk about it. They want to know how it's working. They want to get under the skin of it. By definition, they are inquisitive people <laughs> who always know best. Interestingly, we, we held uh, one of our, our kind of management meetings here. Uh, uh, Richard and Hanny were, were good enough to, to, to let us do that. Um, and we were talking about the, how we'd been linking our marketing automation tool into Google Analytics. And, and the guys had been talking about um, the, the new version of analytics. Hadn't yet been kind of launched properly. Our board had decided what it was, how it was going to be used, and, and, and obviously what was going to happen with it. No knowledge of, of what it was at all. So the, but the results meant people come and ask me now. Well, and and, the, and the, the issue, I guess, is it's not about how much we're going to spend. It's how much do you want to grow? And those are the questions we've been able to kind of flick around. So the commercialism is, is hugely important. It gets you a seat at the table. Without knowing the numbers and without having the results, uh, you will be on the periphery. Simple as that. So then we kind of get into the, uh, probably what in traditional marketing should be the first, this idea of, of kind of creativity. 
And it does take courage. Having an idea takes courage. Standing out from, from kind of the norm takes courage. No matter what discipline you, we all work in, whether that's, um, whether that's a CIO, or, uh, but it doesn't matter. Having an idea takes courage. But you've got to go and find those ideas. You've got to try and, and kind of try things and fail. Um, and, and a couple of things I think about when, when we've talked to the team and we've started to change the team, kind of build, it's about the use of digital can help you be very, very uh, focused on your number, can help you be very, very focused on that line of sight. But sometimes it's too easy to forget why we're all in this room in the first place, which is to be creative animals, to come up with ideas, to find those engaging kind of ways of interacting with your customers. You know, sometimes it's too easy to let the technology make you a very functional marketing team rather than let the ideas make you a great marketing team. And the second thing about creativity is that innovation. You know, it was interesting, um, Chris's kind of slide with all the kind of technology stuff before and he was talking about, you know, uh, automation being legacy. I, was, I used to think, well, I'm doing all right. And he, he made me go and cry in the toilet that I was uh, 10 years behind where everybody else was. Um, but that innovation piece of cutting edge technology, it's important. But I think we mentioned earlier on, 80% is, is sometimes good enough. And, and the technology change within our team has meant we've had to change things. You know, people have had a steep learning curve from, from kind of talking about simply sending emails out to actually building canvases in automation tools and linking those into the website and, and actually having to think about content. Having to think about what content engages people and how to syndicate it and how to get it out and how the message comes across. It's a very different way of thinking for a team and, and the digital piece has, has kind of helped us do that by bringing automation in, by, by linking that through to kind of the, the, the web platforms, by linking kind of our automation rules through to our kind of Google Analytics and really seeing how that kind of all works and, and finding sales opportunities where they didn't exist before. Suddenly the sales team are, are kind of happy with us. So if that's kind of the, the creative angle and, and, and we start thinking about um, we've got our results and we're starting to kind of talk the, the language of the accountant, i.e. revenue and, and kind of cost and, and how much we're growing for a, for a smaller base and we're talking the sales language of kind of, you know, lead to opportunities are increasing, um, kind of opportunity win rates are increasing, therefore revenue is increasing. We've got our kind of innovation piece moving. Suddenly we found the team itself started to believe in themselves. You know, they started to kind of get confident. And sometimes you need that confidence to have those kind of courageous ideas because you can get coiled in a B2B marketing function, can't you? You can get coiled in by just doing what you've always done. And actually by having the results gave the guys the courage and, and, and the ability to just have more ideas and keep finding the way to, to do something different with our automation tool, to do something different with our analytics platform, to do something different with our website, to bring those ideas in around um, kind of TrueView and, and video on demand and bring those ideas in around kind of different, the science behind the display mechanism and show us because they were measuring the results how you know, the attribution modeling works, so we should spend more money in X and spend less money there. Gave them the confidence to kind of come out of themselves a little bit more. So the, uh, the kind of the third C, this idea of consistency. And it, it, the thing that we kind of really worked hard on kind of right at the start was, was have a plan. And that's different to planning things. Having a plan is very different to planning do, to do stuff. And that plan made us, true to kind of what we were doing, stopped us being dragged from pillar to post because I think we've mentioned it earlier on, the, 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 uh, the, the now, now famous poo in the pool uh, of the uh, kind of sales teams. You know, it stopped us getting pulled from pillar to post from who shouts loudest. Because who shouts loudest is no no way of uh, delivering a great plan for growth. You know, it just stops kind of people shouting at you. And this idea of speaking the same language, you know, we probably spent too much time in the first year or so keep talking about the marketing language of stuff around awareness levels and engagement and, 
Um, all those things that kind of my FD looked, screwed his face and looked at me as if to say, you're wasting all my money, aren't you? <laughs> um, and the sales directors kept going, where's the appointment? Where, where are the appointments? Where, where, where are the leads? And we had to change the way we kind of took our reporting, think about those results, kept kind of sending it back around uh, with monotonous kind of regularity. So people were sick of seeing the reports coming around because they were used to seeing them come around. Started talking about the pipeline. Uh, our new managing director was from IBM. So we were talking all about cadence, still not quite sure what it means, but we're still talking about it. Um, <laughs> but really getting that language of, of how we deliver things into the business. Because it's so important. You can't be stood over here being this kind of funky marketeer when the rest of the business is stood over here talking about kind of outturn plans and earnings potential and growth and because you, you're gonna get really lonely over there. It's gonna be quite fun for a while, but it's gonna get very lonely after, in the end. And the last C is the most important one. Uh, this idea of kind of the customer. Now, if a marketing team can't own the customer, I don't know who else will. I think somebody else said it earlier on about the sales teams, because they speak to the customers more than anybody else, they're the ones that know best. Well, actually, we, we all know that before they even talk to our sales guys, our, our customers and our prospects have engaged with us so much and, and read so much of our material and so much of the information that actually we know more about them. My analytics guys, know more about what they've been doing on the website for the last six months than, than a sales guy knows from having six months worth of conversations with them. On the customer, you kind of suddenly have a much, much easier ride into that boardroom table. Your team feels much more confident about what they're doing. The results start to kind of flow through much quicker and much easier. And we did a lot of work. You know, this was probably our biggest single kind of focus area. You know, understand the buyer personas, build the content out as a, as a result of that rather than kind of build the content and then hope and shut your eyes and cross your fingers that somebody would read it and engage with it and, and, and interact with it. And really getting to that point where we could have robust conversations with the, with the rest of the business. You know, you could have a robust conversation around, um, I'll give you an example, you know, where, where we've kind of got the, you know, we spent a lot of time with the sales guys, got them kind of working. You know, in our ops team, we, we kind of said, hang on guys, you know, we've got all these kind of small business customers. And the Screwfix video was, was interesting. You know, they're out on the road, they're, they're, the broadband goes down. What, what happens? You know, what, what, we, what do we do today? Well, we look at on our mobile. We, we, well, why aren't we letting our customers do that? Why don't we give them an app so they can kind of, we can push notifications out. Why don't we give them an app so they can check the kind of status? Why don't we give them an app so they can pay the bills? Ooh, ooh. We've not thought, oh, sounds a bit, uh, sounds a bit frightening. And interestingly, we, I spend more time, as much time now with our kind of IT director and with our kind of chief data officer and those guys as I do with the sales directors. Because we're driving digital activity into the business that positively kind of changes that organization. You know, our, our, our uh, registered users for our kind of my account and our app, they call us and contact us probably uh, 35 percent less no 65 percent less sorry than the people that aren't so digital is driving the business we're giving customers what they want in a way they want to use it and that I think the point around data kind of sits into this you know we've uh, it's the, it's, I can't remember the presentation there was the timeline of uh, of purchases of technology and we're going through a big kind of CRM uh, piece at the moment we've put we're putting Salesforce in our IT director, or our kind of uh, procurement director, oh, cloud, oh, they've not turned a profit in a while. What happens if they go bust? Well, Japan Post will probably buy them to make sure that they don't go bust. Or, so it's this whole mind shift of, 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 of what's happening in the outside world is, is kind of changing. And the customer piece helps us drive those conversations because the customer piece says we need all that, a single customer view, so we need a proper working CRM. The customer piece tells us we need to know what our, our customers are saying and doing so we can go to our service teams, we can go to our sales teams, we can go to the rest of the business and have one version of the truth. You know, what does an IT director want? What does an FD want? What does a small business owner operator want? So the customer piece 
has brought it kind of all together for us. And I guess the, 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 the thing over the last three years is, you know, I, it's, I'd love to tell you we set off on this very straight road and it's been a pleasure of a journey. Um, the, the, the kind of reality is it, it's felt <laughs> a little bit like kind of the wacky races because things go wrong, you know, and you have to kind of fail to learn and you have to kind of try new things to do something else and you've got to find your own path and your team have got to find their own path with you. Because if they don't, it's just you. And you're never enough. That's kind of where we get to. You'll never be enough. We might think we are, and, and, and we might kind of want to be, but you're only as good as the, the kind of the team that you've got. And looking at, at those four things and, and really kind of driving the, the kind of the customer piece in, in, in its, uh, with some real focus has helped us get to that point. And I really do believe that if you understand those four things um, and you really have that, the customer right front and central of, of your mind and your team are live and breathe that customer piece and really go out and be those kind of change agents in the business and really understand it, that we can, we're not just marketeers anymore. You actually trade the business because you understand the customer, you understand your numbers, you're really kind of clear um, about what the sales teams want and what the operations teams want, that's actually trading. You're actually in the middle of the business now rather than on the outside of it. You do have a place and that kind of boardroom table. They might not love us, let's be honest. I hear. It put it this way, if we're not emotionally attached to brands, we, uh, FDs are definitely not gonna be emotionally attached to marketeers, that's a, that's a given. Uh, but we'll actually find a place on that kind of table and that's really, really important. Now, I did have a very corny quote that Hanny uh, kind of took from me uh, that later on, so we'll, we'll kind of leave that alone. These are just a couple of big things that we changed. You know, we've just moved that kind of digital journey so far. You know, we've, lots of disparate things have gone into lots of kind of really um, kind of converged activity. Uh, you know, it was all around channels and just integrating the activity in year one. It was then about kind of automation and the platforms coming together in year two. And then it was about this, you know, how do we kind of get the content right and get it out? And it's worked, you know, we've increased, it's about growth. This has all been about growth for us. You know, it's, it's been a really complicated, we're a complicated business. We've had to do lots of complicated things, but the thing is we've just tried to keep it simple for the customers. And there's that uh, quote that Hanny pinched off me. Um, but it is, kind of, you know, it is us. It's the marketing team. If you own the customer, if we know our numbers, if we work hard with the rest of the business, we're the ones that really can facilitate change. Your teams will want to do that. Your teams want to come on that journey um, and they're the ones that will really make it happen for you. So I do have gone over time. So I thank you very much and I'll hand you back to Rich. Thank you, Paul. That's uh, a really useful insight and a uh, framework you've created there, which I think is excellent. One thing I forgot to say uh, up top was that uh, Paul's actually shortlisted for B2B Marketer of the Year. Uh, I bet you wish you all knew that now because you should, would have taken more notes. But um, So, yeah. fingers crossed. Yes, is it worth it me a little flutter on you? What do you think? Oh, and each way, I bet. Go each on. way, each way. Okay, very good. <laughs> that bad, huh? Um, yeah, exactly. Okay, so, I mean... You said to me that you're able to, or you said that you're, you're able to get the attention of the board because of the data, because of the numbers, because of the results. I speak to a lot of people and they actually say that the fact that digital is so easy to measure, it almost hamstrings them because people are looking purely at the numbers as opposed to the wider impact. Yeah, and I think that's why that creativity piece is important. Yeah. Because if you just are a very functional, if you're just a very functional marketing team, mm -hmm that are just kind of showing numbers, you become a very spreadsheet kind of, uh, you know, a very spreadsheet driven kind of team. And what the creativity does is just add that kind of dollop of, uh, of difference in, mm -hmm. because it's only that kind of creativity that means you become in that thought leader kind of category that where you're providing content that's interesting and engaging, mm -hmm. where people want to, you know, mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you, my managing director does not want to stand up in a, a customer conference uh, and talk about how great our PPC results are. 
but he does want to stand up and talk about the research projects we've done with Ovum or whoever else or how the landscape of kind of customers are changing. So that creativity bit mm -hmm. is, is so important. You can't have one without the other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions uh, for Paul from the floor? We've got uh, one in the middle here. It's amazing. Everyone's moved further back, so uh, Fergal's having to jump over people. Hey. Uh, thanks for the presentation. So uh, it's Duncan Watts from Virgin Media Business. Uh, a, 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 a big Sorry, can't, can't comment. <laughs> I, I'm struck by the similarity that you and I uh, have in, in the dilemma of the brand. You, uh, you know, <laughs> value champion and talk talk, us uh, a consumer champion in Virgin X Media. X Factor and Usain yeah. Bolt. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, uh, and yet trying to sell big, hairy, expensive networks to large corporates, to public sector, to, to system integrators. There's a dilemma in that you've got a lot of brand equity and recognition on the one hand for being a funky consumer cust uh, uh, company and on the Was other. Was that funky? Funky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a 1990s word <laughs> I'd like to use in, in Virgin. Um, how, are you, how, are you how are you approaching the, the dilemma of consumer recognition versus cut through in B2B enterprise? Um, with difficult, I'll be honest, with difficulty. Um, we rebranded from uh, Opal in, in the, in the uh, dim and distant past of what seems a long time ago, was probably only about three years ago. Um, and we kind of, you know, the pros and cons. We were never going to invest in the Opal brand to make it kind of well known, yet the Talk Talk brand was, was uh, at the time probably not where it needed to be. Um, what we've tried to do is, is use um, the group element, so the stability, financial, the, the network, the, so you know, all the things that being part of a 1.8 billion pound kind of group give you, and then hive off the bits that are our own. So you know, our own, you know, we have our own ideas, we have our own kind of thought process. We we do work, you know, we do work independently from them. Uh, the brand piece is is always the one that that, that causes us massive kind of indigestion. You know, we've just put a, a new uh, a new piece together around business grade you know, business grade Britain and, and it's trying to find the links and the synergies with what our consumer kind of colleagues, cousins, sisters, whatever we want to call them, uh, long lost friends sometimes, uh, you know, they talk about Britain's better off. So we've had to find synergies where we can. Uh, it, it's the thing that probably causes me most kind of pain. Uh, it's the, it's the thing that I've not got an answer for. I'd love to be able to kind of share with you. I think what we've, tr what we've fundamentally tried to do is take the best things, big group, stability, every, you know, more people know us, and then turn it into what are our kind of big proof points. You know, so you know, our, our UK service. What are the things that are you, you know, unique to us within the B2B uh, arena that consumers don't have or don't want? and really kind of try and push those hard. And it's as much about getting our sales teams to, to buy into it, getting our operations teams to buy into that kind of brand piece. And then we hope that uh, when the X Factor's on, we get lots of uh, passing traffic. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, time for one more question for Paul, if there is anything. They're all waiting for the big crescendo. <laughs> what, another en energizer? Yeah, possibly. <laughs> OK, yes, yeah, sorry, man. Great presentation. I love the four C's. It's dead on. Uh, I noticed you had a 25% budget cut. Uh, can you just say a couple of words about that and what happened and how? Yeah, no, so um, that's kind of the overall cost envelope. So it was a, a, a restructuring. Um, so the, uh, the, the, the kind of the FT numbers were, were kind of cut. Um, and the way we kind of got over that um, was to put automation in. Mm. So kind of automation to us in year one, I'd love to be able to tell you was this great visioneering idea of how we were going to kind of revolutionize the business. We needed to do more with less. Um, and actually by kind of integrating all the channels together, we actually saw uh, the team, were, uh, you know, once they got over the hump of losing 20% of the colleagues, uh, the team were much more uh, in control of what they were doing, they had much more kind of empowerment to kind of make those decisions. Uh, it was tough, um, you know, things dip up and down as a, we talked about earlier on with a, a listed company, you, uh, you've got to roll with the punches. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, yeah, I brought it up because I think people think that life is easy when you're in a big company, but that's a very substantial budget cut, and I'm sure it was oh, very yeah, hard I, work. I, I think the same results as a company. big company, small companies, uh, everybody has their own kind of uh, problems to, to deal with. I agree with, with kind of the, the gentleman earlier on. You know, working quarterly is, 
is a huge pain in the backside because you know there's no point beating around the bush you know you you, you have to make short-term decisions and then your planning changes the good thing is you know if you can prove growth you generally get back to the hilt so i think it's pluses and minuses yeah, yeah. fantastic paul thank you very much indeed no worries, thank you